Welcome, dear friends, to our time of devotional reflection for Friday, February the 2nd, 2024. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. And I am here to read for you uh, today's entry from the book, Hearing God Throughout the Year. A 365-day devotional. It was written by Dallas Willard and Jan Johnson, uh, based on Dallas Willard's book, Hearing God. Today's entry is entitled, Desperate to Hear. O God, do not keep silent. Do not be quiet, O God. Be not still. Psalm 83, verse 1. In primitive rituals such as Bible roulette, picking verses at random for guidance, frequently practiced by, believe it or not, present-day believers, we see a desperate urgency to get a word from God, especially a word on what is going to happen and what we should do about it. If necessary, some people are prepared to force such a word from God or someone else. Hearing God cannot be a reliable and intelligible fact of life except when we see his speaking as one aspect of his presence with us and of his life in us. Only our communion with God provides the appropriate context for communications between us and him. And within these communications, guidance will be given in a manner suitable to our particular lives and circumstances. It will fit into our life together with God in his earthly and heavenly family. This insight helps us in learning to discern the voice of God. Reflect. What methods have you used to try to get a word from God? Casting fleeces, that means basically asking God to prove that it's his will by saying, if you do this, then I'll know you're saying something. Or maybe wanting something so much that you make up answers from God, so you put words in God's mouth. Or going for counsel from people who will say what you want them to say? That's an old, old strategy. How do these attempts frustrate communion with God rather than foster it? Dear friends, as always, I commend you for taking just a few minutes out of your day to listen to me read uh, one of these devotional reflections. And I thank you because it's a real joy, a real pleasure for me to read them. And I do what I commend you to do. I take time to think through these implications to reflect on what these things mean and so i pray you will do that and i also pray you'll join me again tomorrow when i'll read the next entry from hearing god throughout the year until then may you go in the grace and the peace of our lord and savior jesus christ 